You want to know how to engage the player from the start when making a tutorial? Well, let me tell you how that's achieved. Grabbing the player's attention from the beginning of the game is incredibly important. We want to captivate them into the world itself and the gameplay. Balancing the two is difficult. Some games have walls of text explaining the law and gameplay, while others just launch you into the game without anything. A balance between the two is crucial for an enjoyable experience. Let's take a look at Portal 2 to see how a masterpiece of a game introduces the player to the world. In the start, you're giving limited information, making the player curious while also incorporating a tutorial. This is essentially an interactive tutorial, and in my opinion, the best way to engage the player. The player has no option but to listen to the voice, and everything else in the room is pointless. However, the interest is kept by making many goals while also incorporating a backstory to the main character, and a few small, funny jokes. If you suspect staring at art has not provided the required intellectual sustenance, reflect briefly on this classical music. Now, the geniuses at Valve rewrote this intro a million times, so take your time when crafting an intro and a tutorial. Having an interactive tutorial is perfect, but no one wants to go through every damn option in the video game. You want to flesh this out to the start of the game, maybe even the middle or in rare cases the end of the game. So. This is done in Portal by introducing you first to the single Portal gun. It can only shoot the blue Portal onto the white planes, and that explains you roughly how Portals work. And later, you will acquire the dual Portal gun, where you can shoot both the blue and the orange Portal gun. Now, take a look at this next sequence. The Portal will open, and emergency testing will begin in 3, 2, 1. The player is forced to look at themselves entering and exiting the portals, and this gives them a subconscious understanding of how portals work. It is very subtle, and people don't even realize that it's a part of the tutorial, but it is, and it's deliberately made for people to understand how these portals work. So show your player how the game works, instead of verbally explaining it or having that wall of text. Now let's take a look at a game that fails at making a tutorial. Did you really expect anything else? I livestreamed myself playing this game and nothing made sense. You need pre-hand information, knowledge to understand the GUI, the goals and controls, uh, nowhere to be found, no hints were giving, where to find Osana and, and the buttons are remap okay. all the time. Here's an example. remaps the interaction button with the push button that led me to accidentally push off the poor girl off the roof to her death. It is insane how badly this game has been made and how bad the tutorial is. So let's break this down. Instead of having an interactive tutorial, we're giving walls of text and this is bad. The player is bored and they have no... they, they don't want to read text. Now, instead of actually having relevant information in these walls of text, the pure basics are given. How to walk, how you interact with things, it's, it's boring. No one wants to know that. So, it fails to explain the core mechanics of the game, and that this leads to the player wandering around the game and having no idea what to do. That was at least what I did, so I needed uh, outside information to actually understand how to play the game. And to actually get a hold of the hints on how to eliminate people, you need points. Oh, mini games. Woo! 
But acquiring these points, you need to take photos in a disgusting way. Or, or you, 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 can, you can place webcams all over the school, but the locations are unknown. So you have no chance of knowing where to place the webcams and there are no indications. You need to walk up to a wall and see if there's th that little E to place the webcam or not. And if there's no indication, bad luck, you need to search another place. None of the... There are no hints given to where these places are. You cannot be creative. You have no chance of figuring out the elimination methods. Y the elimination methods are nowhere hinted at. And if you want the method, you have to buy it and then go through it like a grocery list when you're out shopping, and you need to follow it like a checklist. I've done that, that, that. It's boring. No one. It's pointless gameplay. In every game, the player needs to be guided through the game. But we don't want to mold the player and throw them to the finish line. The player needs to think themselves. Look at Hitman Absolution for inspiration. The start of the game, you're not reading anything. You are forced into a situation where you need to eliminate one of the guards. And he stands, he, he can't even see you. You're walking up behind him and then taking him down. And th this explains you, this, this subconsciously explains to you how to eliminate people. Now in the next sequence, there are two guards placed uh, far between each other. And so, in this sequence, you are taught that you need to take down the guards in a pattern as to not get discovered. Because if you take down guard 2 before you take down guard 1, guard 1 will notice it, notice you and, and alert the other guards. This is a perfect tutorial at explaining the player that these guards are aware of the surroundings. Again, in another Hitman game, there are small hints given to how, how to eliminate these people by the statue right here. You can un uh, unscrew the bolts on, on the statue to make it unstable. Now, these screws are ginormous and you can't miss them. And there is a specific path only leading up to the statue. And you know that one of the targets that you need to eliminate is at the place at a specific time frame. So this is where the player is given so many hints that it's a possible elimination method, even by making the place out of wood to say, hey, you can crash this whole statue down on your rival. But again, you're not being molded into a spear and thrown to the finish line. You're only given subtle hints to how to eliminate these in a creative way. That's how to make a tutorial. Here are my golden rules. The game has to be interactive in the tutorial. This means that they won't be given that wall of text. That's boring. No one wants to read that. The game has to include as much relevant information as possible. This means that the player doesn't have to know how to move around or move a camera or use the menu. They just need to know the core mechanics of, of gameplay. And you need to explain that subtly. The third um, rule is that f you flesh it out. Now you can flesh this out in three minutes, in five minutes, uh, over to the middle of the game or, or the finish line. It doesn't matter. It just needs to be fleshed out because no one w wants again just all the information thrown at them at once. It's, it's overwhelming and it's boring and they'll forget it. You need to flesh this out. Huh, so you made it to the end of the video. Uh, I want to thank you for watching, first of all. But also, I'm still working on Project High School. And this project is essentially a series of tutorials that I want to make explaining how to optimize Unity. And all the 3D assets will be giving out for free. So it takes a lot, a lot, a lot of time to make. And it takes up a lot of my time while I still have assignments to make and, and my own problems to deal with. So this YouTube channel is a hobby. 
and I love making videos, but I'm also a perfectionist. So I'll see you guys modeling.